We're pretty fortunate that these days we can travel to places like the Unidata Track in relative comfort. But then, Australians have never shied away from trying to conquer tough terrain. Our snow fields offer some of the most mesmerising views in the country. But reaching these high passes was once incredibly hard. The first skiers had to walk in. Transport has always been a problem, and still is with the unpredictable weather of the Australian Alps and a road that's half cleared, but liable to be snowed in. Now, access is easier. And on the right day, it's a delight to take the drive to Dinner Plain before continuing onwards to Jindabyne and the majestic peak of Kosciuszko. If you're looking for a road trip with a difference, this could be the one. Mainly huskies and malamutes. It's just a I'm really starting my trip with from, Sue Simmons, uh, organiser of the town's state. annual dog They're sledding pretty races. Pretty and all these beautiful snow gums. It looks just magical. We've been so lucky because we've had 30 centimetres overnight, so we've got great conditions. You've had a big dump. Yes, big dump. <laughs> Plain was farming land until some keen skiers got together in the 1980s and transformed it into this fairy tale village. And right now it's full of huskies, all here for the dog sledding event. Today's races range from teams of two to eight dogs, and their drivers use voice commands to steer them. Courtney Pearson is originally from Canada and brought her huskies with her when she migrated to Australia six years ago. I got my first Siberian husky and she was an absolute psycho and the only way I could really enjoy her was to take her out sledding because if I tried to walk her like a regular dog your arm just got dragged off. One thing led to another and now I have a whole team. <laughs> what do you get out of it? Oh you get to spend time with your best friends. What more do you want? <laughs> what a treat to be driving through here at the peak of the snow season. I'm now taking a road called the Barry Way that snakes over the border to the New South Wales snowfields. It's an icy start, but the scenery soon changes. The narrow dirt road dips below the snow line as it runs right along the Snowy River into New South Wales. This valley was once a major corridor for Aboriginal people moving to and from the high country. My destination is the winter village of Charlotte Pass, it's the highest and oldest ski resort in Australia. But in winter, my car can still only get me so far. The only way to get to Charlotte Pass is by oversnow vehicle. Every trip, it's only 9Ks, but every trip, the sun is different, the shadows are different, you know, this changes every time I go past it. Oh, it's a magic day, stunning weather.
The little archways are where the horses used to go. Oh, that was really? the stables. This magnificent Kosciuszko Chalet was built in the 1930s. But I'm not stopping for long because I've got an invitation I can't refuse. This will do 120. Will it? Yeah. Woohoo! God! <laughs> Howie Cooper runs the ski patrol and is responsible for the safety of all the resort skiers. I love it! <laughs> He's lived and worked in this area for 35 years. Whoop. I've got the best job in Australia. <laughs> yeah, people, people will die for this job, mate. So here we are. Oh, this is my beautiful. backyard. Beautiful. That is stunning. Uh, oh. So, Howie, we are pretty much close to the top of Australia. Very close. You could throw a stone on it and hit it. That is the top of Australia. Um, of course, the Osco, 2,228 metres. It's the highest mountain in Australia. And, of course, Mount Townsend is eight metres lower. No wonder you love this job. 